Welcome to Christ Church. The following is a homily from our Sunday morning gathering in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Enjoy. Uh, it is good to be back with you all uh, here at Christ Church. As I think you know and I hope have experienced, uh, you all have been supported by love and prayer from this whole diocese of Oklahoma uh, in this most challenging of seasons for you all, and, and indeed by the church uh, beyond Oklahoma um, and around the country and beyond even that. You have so much love and so many prayers that have been uh, coming your way and that continue to come your way. I'm so grateful uh, to all of you for the good work that you have been doing, even in these most difficult of times, and I'm grateful also to uh, your clergy team here, uh, to Father Omar, uh, to Deacon Bill, uh, to Sarah, who's been helping out uh, as well, and grateful as well to uh, all of your wonderful lay staff and all of the volunteers uh, in this place. I also want to offer my uh, congratulations at this service to those who will be baptized and confirmed <clears throat> at the, the next service. Uh, we've got a wonderful group of folks who are making those important commitments of faith. I have a lot of things that I believe, but one of the things that I believe is that God uses the lectionary, the pattern of scripture readings that we work through on a three-year pattern on Sunday mornings, that God uses that pattern of Scripture readings for good, for our benefit. Um, I believe that God gives us in that pattern of readings what we need to hear, whether it's our Sunday readings or our daily readings for the daily office of morning and evening prayer. God gives us what we need to hear in Holy Scripture. And so, if I believe that to be true, if we believe that to be true, then the question always is, what is God trying to say to us today? So, what is God trying to say to Christ Church today? What is God trying to say to you and to me? Well, the words of the people to Bartimaeus, the blind beggar in today's gospel. Those are the words that I think above all God is trying to say to us today. Take heart, get up, he is calling you. Take heart, get up, he is calling you. When we think about all of our scripture readings today, we begin with our first reading today from Jeremiah, and it is a reading of comfort, a reading of comfort. In that beautiful Jeremiah reading, we were hearing about how God will gather up God's people and God will bring them home. The blind and the lame, those with child, those who are weeping, God will bring God's hurting and grieving people home with consolation and on a straight and safe path. Our psalm this morning also has beautiful words of comfort for us today. The psalmist says, those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, shall come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Readings of deep comfort today. Our reading from the letter to the Hebrews is also a reading of comfort, though a little bit different. Our reading from the letter to the Hebrews today reminds us that as much as we all want to rely on human beings, 
including human clergy, priests and deacons and bishops, we have a forever high priest in Jesus Christ. He is able for all time to save those who approach God through him. Yes, God is giving us words of comfort today. But, but that's not all, I think. Which brings me to our gospel where I want to spend most of our time. And this absolutely amazing story of Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus the blind beggar. Now, as we get a sense of Bartimaeus in this gospel today, we realize this is not a shy, somewhat reticent, though curious, member of the crowd. This is not Nicodemus, for example, coming to Jesus secretly, quietly, by night. How long has Bartimaeus been waiting by the side of the road for Jesus to come this way? What had Bartimaeus heard about this Jesus? I wonder, had he dreamed for weeks or months for this day to come? After all of the rumors swirling around about what Jesus had been doing in the surrounding areas, the healings and the exorcisms, Bartimaeus shouts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet. Be quiet. Everybody says to Bartimaeus, what are you doing? But Bartimaeus, he shouts even louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus hears him. And Jesus calls him near. Take heart. Get up. He is calling you, the people say to Bartimaeus. And then what does he do? He throws off his cloak. He springs up. And he comes to Jesus. And he is healed in body and in spirit. His sight is restored and his sins are forgiven. My friends, this reading is for us today. Not just words of comfort, but words of call. For Jesus says to Bartimaeus, go, your faith has made you well, after he heals him. But Bartimaeus does not go. He doesn't. What does he do instead? He comes with Jesus. We're told he follows him on the way. God is most assuredly bringing us comfort today. And when we cry out from the very anguish of our hearts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He hears us. He hears us and he calls us near. We will in God's mysterious ways and times be healed from all that hurts us. We don't know when or how, but we have God's promise. The final healing, the end and fullness of it, may not come until our resurrection, which Jesus will give us, but it will 
surely come. Even our scars will be made new. But will we also, as we are healed in this life and the life to come, will we follow Jesus as our Lord and Savior? This blind Bartimaeus, the beggar, is the very opposite of the rich young man that we heard about some weeks ago. You may remember that the rich young man, so earnest, so polite, told Jesus that he had followed all the religious rules all his life, and there was no reason to doubt him on that. You remember what Jesus' response was to that rich young man. You lack one thing, Jesus told him. Go, sell all that you have, and come and follow me. And he could do it. He could not do it. The rich man went away weeping. He couldn't let go of what he thought was important, even even for the most important thing of all. But this Bartimaeus today, this Bartimaeus doesn't even hold on to his cloak. One of the only possessions he had and something he desperately needed to keep warm on the streets. He throws it off, springs up. It's probably bumping into people in the crowd on the left and the right. He lunges forward desperately to Jesus. And when Bartimaeus was healed, he could have gone on his way, on to a very different kind of life with his sight restored. Jesus said he could. He gave him permission. Go. But instead, he chose to follow Jesus, to be a disciple. And you may notice something else, too, in this reading today. Unlike the earlier, somewhat similar stories in Mark's gospel, here... Jesus does not tell Bartimaeus to be quiet and not share with anybody else what's happened to him. Now, is this because Jesus is headed to Jerusalem and the culmination of his life and mission? That there's no more time left for secrecy? Perhaps. Or is it that he knows he couldn't shut up noisy Bartimaeus if he tried? (laughs) Comfort today, friends. Yes, comfort, but also call. Take heart. Get up. He is calling you. Hear this today. If all we can do for now is receive God's loving comfort, the promise of tears wiped away, and a safe homecoming, that is enough. That is more than enough for God to rest in God's love. God expects nothing more today. But if we can, today or tomorrow or in weeks or in months or years, there is also the call to throw our cloaks aside, leap up, and come to Christ the call to follow Jesus as a disciple, to make his ways our ways.
a radical reorientation to loving God and our neighbor. The gracious invitation is always there. Take heart. Get up. He is calling you. Amen.